Woke up with the light A sky so blue upon my eyes With a thankful heart Today is another brand new start I feel so positive Welcome back, my dear friends. This is Mr. Asal Mukbil, the English teacher and the self-improvement coach. Actually, I'm very thrilled and extremely elated today to share with you the last beautiful episode of our lesson, Subject Verb Agreement. But before I say the ball round, I'd like to share with you two nice idioms used by native speakers. And I want you please to know them by heart and to practice them all the time with love, passion, enthusiasm, positivity, and unstoppable and unshakable determination. Number one, by sight, by sight, by sight. When you know somebody by sight, it means that you don't know him very well. It means that you know him only by his facial expressions or his appearance. You can recognize him only by his appearance because sometimes you don't know what his name is. For example, hey bro, do you still remember the math teacher who taught us at the public school 10 years ago? And then he answered, to be honest with you, I don't remember him very well, but I think that I can recognize him by sight in case I see him in person. So when you know someone by sight, it means that you don't know him very well, you can just recognize him by his appearance. Number two, like the back of my hand, like the back of my hand, like the back of my hand, like the back of my hand. When you know someone like the back of your hand, it means that you know him very well. I know you like the back of my hand. So that's why now I'm begging you to know this lesson and its secrets like the back of your hand, not by sight. So I think that you are ready enough to go on this beautiful journey about some confusing words. The first station of our journey is about collective nouns. Now, what is the collective noun? It's a word that refers to a group of people, animals, or even birds. For example, family, army, class, crew, band, staff, flock. For example, family, a group of family members, you know, nieces, nephews, uh, parents, grandparents, grandsons, granddaughters, uncles, aunts, and so on. Army, a group of soldiers, a class, a group of students, crew, a group of employees, staff, a group of teachers, and so on. Now, how can we know whether these words are singulars or plurals? Very simple, like a piece of cake, actually. If these words come as one unit, teacher, what do you mean by one unit? One unit, I mean here, every single member in that collective noun is doing the same thing or has the same feeling simultaneously. For example, my family is happy. Now, why did you use it as a singular noun here? Because the family is one unit. What do you mean by one unit? That everybody in my family is happy. I hope so. So my family is happy. It means that no one is upset. No one is frustrated. No one is extremely uh, disappointed. No, everybody is happy. It means that everybody there in my family members is happy. Now, on the flip side, in case we have a group of individuals doing different things in that collective noun, here we have to know that the collective noun is a plural. Look at this example. The flock we're running off in every direction. My simple question to you is, do you think that every member in that flock is running off in the same direction or different directions? Excellent, different directions. So here we have different activities done by different individuals at the same time in that collective noun. That's why we have to know that the collective noun in this situation is a plural. So I think that the criterion here is the context. If you feel or understand or know that the collective noun is one unit, singular. Now, a group of individuals doing different activities simultaneously, here you have to know that the collective noun is plural and it must take a plural verb. The second situation, knowingly, everybody knows that all English words in the plural case uh, you know, and, and SRES, most of them actually, not all of them, most of them. Like for example, you know, drivers, trucks, posters, uh, boards, teachers, drivers, and so on and so forth. Now, some words end in S, but they are not plural at all. They are singular. For example, we have physics, phonetics, mathematics, semantics, statistics, politics, and so on. You know that these words actually are not plural. They are singulars and they take singular verbs. Why? Because actually these are names of courses or subjects. For example, physics, you know, the study of matter of, you know, the properties of matter and energy. Phonetics, the study of sounds, mathematics, you know, numbers, semantics, meanings. 
So the study of meanings here is semantics. I say semantics is very broad. I don't say that semantics are. Why? Because semantics is one subject, one course. Or you can say that phonetics requires a lot of deep and very profound analysis. So require is not require. Why? Because phonetics is only one course or one subject. The last situation here is the correlative conjunctions. The most common correlative conjunctions in English are neither nor either or. Neither nor and and neither nor either or. Now the question is how can we know whether these words come with singular subjects or singular verbs? I want you just to remember this golden rule. Always focus on the subject that is closer to the verb. If the subject is singular, use a singular verb. Plural, use a plural verb. The same rule we have always demonstrated and explained together. Look at these two examples. Neither Sammy nor his friend. Now my question is, which one is closer to the verb no? Sammy or his friend? Answer, don't be afraid. Yes, his friend. Is a singular or plural? Definitely it's singular. That's why we have to use knows. Why? Because in the simple present tense, we have to use s at the end of the verb in case the subject is singular. The second example is either Sam or his mates is going or are going to bring gifts. The same questions again one more time. Mates, which one is closer to the verb is going or are going? Sam or his mates? Surely his mates. Plural or singular? Definitely, it's a plural. That's why we have to circle the second answer, are going to bring gifts, not is going. Why? Because mates is plural, so we must use a plural verb. By the end of this nice episode about subject verb agreement, hopefully you understood every single piece of information I have explained and shared with you. And don't forget, please, if you want to make your dream come true and you want to improve yourself whether in English or in any other courses in any different spheres of this life remember that you have to arm yourself with passion and with unstoppable practice and practice all the time with love enthusiasm positivity a great energy and determination by the end of this video I wish you all kinds of ecstasy and relaxation. Thank you so much and have a nice weekend. Bye bye.